Hello everyone. Welcome to the first lesson in the Milvis course. My name is Philip and I will be answering the question, what is Milvis? In the previous lesson, we introduced the course overview and what to expect. For this lesson, we will be doing a Milvis 101. The outline for this lesson looks like this. We will be going over what Milvis brings to the table in regards to AI applications, the history of Milvis as a project, and lastly some applications where Milvis is being used today. So let's talk about Milvis. We generally divide data into three categories, structured data, semi-structured data, and unstructured data. Structured data includes things such as numbers, dates, strings, things that have definite structure and can easily be compared to each other. Semi-structured data is similar. It usually comes in the form of textual information that adheres to a specific format. Some examples of semi-structured data are system logs, JSONs, and XML files. With unstructured data, there is no easy way for computers to compare the data directly. Things like images, videos, voice, and natural language fall under this, with 80% of all data falling into this category. When dealing with structured and semi-structured data, we can use tools such as relational databases and text-based search engines. On the other hand, when dealing with unstructured data, we did not have the tools until very recently with the introduction of deep learning models. The charm of deep learning models is that they can convert the unstructured information that computers can't understand into feature information that they can easily process. The feature information usually comes in the form of embedding vectors and matrices. The end result of this is that unstructured data has turned into a vector computation. How do people usually use AI technologies to analyze unstructured data? Well, as shown here, a flow-based AI application is a typical example. Assuming we're going to analyze a video, we can create some operation streams, usually called pipelines. The leftmost pipeline captures the video frames and extracts the features from the captured image. Here, for example, we use the VGG model, a model with excellent generalization capabilities. Images go in and feature vectors come out. The middle pipeline handles sound. It generates audio feature vectors from an inputted audio stream. This usually comes in many steps that would not fit in this representation. Lastly, the rightmost pipeline automatically labels some attributes for the videos. If you have other special requirements, you can build a new pipeline to do the related processing. This is why flow-based AI applications are so popular, because they are flexible. And developers don't even have to write code. There are web-based interfaces to help users to compute the new process. If you have no idea how to start, you can usually find some useful samples online. But in this way, it also brings us a new challenge. The data becomes very fragmented. It was, originally one video. it was originally one video, but with the operation of the pipelines, it was gradually transformed into different data spread in different corners. The question is, what can we do about this? Let's turn to the traditional hierarchical view. For the top input and the bottom output are unstructured data. AI technology mainly functions in the middle two layers, the green layer being model inference, and the blue layer being the data service. The task of model inference is to transform unstructured data into feature vectors. Models are pre-trained, but serving them efficiently is not easy. The good news is that there are already some mature projects in the industry, such as NVIDIA's Tensor RT, Intel OpenVINO, Microsoft Onyx RT, and recently Google is developing TensorFlow Runtime, TFRT. But there is no comprehensive solution for the data service layer. Some people put vectors in a structured database, others in HDFS, and then analyze vectors through Spark and some build up entire solutions using ANN libraries. The challenge is how to manage and analyze the vectors efficiently, and no standard has been set yet. Even though there are a large number of pre-trained models readily available, it is still difficult to get into production due to the large cost in creating and running this data service layer. To address this challenge, our answer is to build up an unstructured data service powered by Milvis. It contains four parts. The first part is the embedding analysis layer which handles high dimensional dense vectors in deep learning scenarios and sparse vectors in traditional machine learning scenarios. The second part is attaching attributes to the data, also known as scalar data. An example would be labeling vectors with strings and tags. When we combine the attributes in the vectors, we can provide the capability to perform hybrid searches or collaborative search searches. The third part is support for multimodal compatibility. As in the previous example, a video has vectors of different dimensions. There are image vectors and audio vectors, so in the real world, the multimodal search is a common requirement. To accomplish this, we need to introduce the concept of entity for the unstructured 
data. An entity could contain multiple vectors of different dimensions. The fourth part is the scoring component. In some scenarios, like multimodal search, because we introduce different models, the results cannot be easily combined or compared. The fully connected layers of the different models will need to be fused to form a new scoring mechanism for the analysis of unstructured data. Currently, Milvis supports embedding analysis, is developing attribute filtering, and planning the multimodal and scoring components. The end goal for Milvis is not just to be a high-performance vector search engine. We want to build a comprehensive infrastructure software for unstructured data services. Maybe you have been convinced embedding vectors are very important in today's data applications. But why don't we just support them through relational databases and other big data technologies? A vector also just looks like a number. What's the difference? There are two major sets of differences when looking at a vector and a number and their storage systems. First, the common operations with vectors and numbers are different. The most common operations between numbers are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. With vectors, on the other hand, the most common operation is to calculate the distance between the two. For this example, the Euclidean distance can be observed on the slides. As you can see, this operation is a lot more computationally intensive than a simple arithmetic operation. Secondly, the indexing organization of the data is different. When dealing with numbers, the values of them can be directly compared, so we can index stored numbers based on algorithms like B-trees. But between two vectors, we're not able to perform this comparison. We can only calculate the similarity between the two vectors. So the vector index is usually based on algorithms like the approximate nearest neighbor ANN algorithm. Here I give two ANN approaches, a clustering index and a graph index. We'll go further into details about this in the later lessons. Because of these significant differences, the traditional database and big data technologies cannot meet the requirements of vector analysis. The algorithms they support and the scenarios they target are too different. Here's an overview of a Milvis single node server. I want to highlight four major parts. The first part is the support for heterogeneous computing. Due to Zillas's experience in heterogeneous compute, we thought about how to support different computing resources so, so that we could accelerate computation intensive scenarios with Milvis. The heterogeneous computing resources supported by Milvis include the SSE AVX2 and AVX512 instruction sets. We also support NVIDIA GPUs and ARM processors. Currently, we are working with some partners on how to further extend Milvis to the RISC-V architecture. But this work is still in its early stages. The second part is the data management function. We want to provide an unstructured data service, so functional data, man data management is critical. Milvis supports data partitioning, data sharding, deletion of vectors, and stream injection. The third part is the adoption and improvement of the ANN algorithm libraries. A capable vector search engine is fundamental to an unstructured data service. Milvis provides state-of-the-art vector search performance by adopting and improving on the well-known ANN algorithm libraries such as FACE and ANOI. The fourth part is the support for many application development environments. To enable AI developers to build their applications with Milvis, we provide several SDKs, including Python, C++, Java, and Go. Let's take a turn to the journey that Milvis has been through so far. The initial idea of this project was back in October of 2018. At that time, we were involved in a project that needed vector search functionality. We tried to do it in our structured database, but it did not fit well. This is when we started to think about this challenge more seriously. In April of 2019, we released Milvis version 0.1 and tested it with our first seed user. After much improvement, Milvis version 0.5 was then released, and with it, our journey into the open source world began. Today, Milvis is one of the most active projects from the software development perspective in the Linux AI and Data Foundation. A big recent accomplishment that we have achieved was the release of our first long-term supported version of Milvis, Milvis version 1.0. Though Milvis is still a young project, people all over the world are already starting to build their AI applications with Milvis and are pushing it into production. I think the most attractive benefits that Milvis offers are its ease of use and its speed. This results in lower hardware and time costs, so developers can make viable products at a minimal cost. Next, I will introduce a few open source Milvis application scenarios. We'll also have courses to introduce these demos and show you how to build these systems. So for now, I'll briefly introduce them here, and you can stay tuned for the demo course later. The first application scenario is a chatbot. 
This chatbot uses natural language processing to help us better understand the question being asked and to ultimately find the right answer. The process is divided into three steps. First, we must collect a large amount of QA data, also known as a corpus. Second, we must import the data into Milvis, which corresponds to the black arrows on the figure. We start by cleaning the QA data, then use a BERT model to generate feature vectors. We then store those feature vectors into Milvis and receive their unique IDs. We use these IDs to store the original question and answer combo in a relational database. You may ask why we need to use a relational database. This is because Milvis does not yet support tagging vectors with string attributes. The same use of a relational database will be seen in the next examples as well. The second part is the retrieval process. When the user asks a question, Milvis returns the IDs of similar questions. We can use these IDs to pull out the original question and answer combo from the relational database and just return the answer as the answer that's closest to the question being asked by the user. The second example is a reverse image search system. This system uses a VGG16 model to extract feature vectors from an image. These feature vectors are then stored in Milvis, and the corresponding unique IDs and image file paths are stored in a relational database. Once a new image is to be searched, the feature vectors of this image are extracted and used for a search within Milvis. The results of this search are unique IDs, which we can use to return the original image file that is most similar to the search image. While the first two examples are based on computer vision and natural language processing, the next one presents Milvis empowering the traditional AI pharmaceutical industry. This application is used to find similar molecules, and in the field it is used for speeding up research on chemical interactions. We first begin by translating the molecule expression into 2048-bit long binary string data and store it in the Milvis server. Then we perform the Tenimoto similarity analysis the substructure analysis, and the Struper structure analysis to find the most similar molecules. With this system, we can analyze over 800 million molecules in about 500 milliseconds on a single server. Next is the audio retrieval system. Audio retrieval is similar to image retrieval, but here the PANS inference model is used to generate the feature vectors and retrieve the most similar sounds in Milvis. That was it for this lesson. If you are interested in the Milvis project, please visit our website and check out our GitHub project page. See you in the next lesson.